Hello, my name is Ken and I'm a tackleholic. I have been a tackleholic for as long as I can remember. I recall getting my first tackle box when I was six or seven years old, thinking I could never possibly fill it, and then realizing that I needed a new, bigger tackle box just a couple of months later. That was more than 50 years ago, when I thought a tackle box was something that held every piece of fishing equipment you owned, except the rod and reel. Over time, tackle storage improved, became more modular, less focused on the one box to carry it all philosophy, which really ruled the bass fishing world until Plano introduced the 3600 and 3700 boxes. That advancement didn't help my addiction at all though, but it did make me more organized and it revolutionized tackle storage. In some ways, I'm a pretty organized guy. You won't find spools of monofilament mixed with fluorocarbon in my garage bins, but you might find some food that expired in the 1980s in my office. I'm not proud of this, but I am proud of every rod and reel, every spool of line, every crankbait, spinnerbait, plastic worm, and jig that I own. And I still have some of the first baits I ever got. They're treasures, even though many of them have never caught a bass. You just never know when you might need a frog pattern hula popper bought in a rural South Carolina hardware store in 1974, even though the skirt rotted off decades ago. You cannot convince me that lures that worked 40 or 50 years ago will not catch bass today. I've caught too many bass on too many old baits to be fooled like that. Besides, bass are just not that smart. And even though a lure maybe isn't new to you or me, it can still be new to a fish. I will admit without hesitation that newer is usually better when it comes to fishing gear. Today's lures are generally better than the baits I grew up with, if only because they cast better, have better paint jobs, better hooks and hardware, more realistic colors. These advancements keep me buying new gear even when my old gear is honestly just fine. And I think you'll agree with me that you can't have just one of something especially when it comes to lures. What if a giant bass breaks you off or you run out of a special bait? Where would you be then? Nowhere, that's where. You obviously can't let that happen. You must buy at least two of everything. Six is even better. If I was to make a lap around my boat right now, I would find boxes and bags of lures that I forgot I had, forgot I bought. It would be like Christmas. And when I prep my tackle, and organize my boat for a fishing trip, I easily carry a hundred times more gear than I need. More rods, more reels, more line, more lures, more sunscreen, more life jackets, more tools, more drinks, more ice, more everything. I don't want to worry about running out of something, but I'm always worried about not having exactly the right thing, about suddenly realizing that I left it in the garage. You just never know what you might need, what the fish might want. But it's a pretty safe bet that whatever your buddy caught them on is nowhere in your arsenal when you most want it. If you're a tackleholic, like me, you know just exactly what I mean when I say that the poison is the cure. Tonight's show is for you. Welcome to Bass After Dark. For the next 90 minutes or so, we hope to show you that inch for inch and pound for pound, we are the most illuminating show in all of bass fishing. Now it's time to bring on my co-host. He and his construction crew are kitchen specialists because obviously that's where the food is. Please welcome Brian the Carpenter. Hey. Thank you. Settle down out there. Settle down. Yes. Notice how as soon as I said settle down, they were they were quiet. That's a yes, they listen. They listen. They, they are listeners. They listen I you, appreciate Ken. that. No, no, no. I know better yeah. than that. Yeah. Welcome, BTC. Mike. Another episode of Bass After Dark. Yes, we're here. We're doing it. It's Thursday night. It's uh, Sucker Free Thursdays, Ken, if you didn't know. Uh, I, I was not aware. Pick. I would jump in early and uh, just put it out there for best new bass bait of 2024. Coming straight from my garage. There it is. I like it. The frozen clear, gizzard a, shed. A clear winner. A frozen gizzard shed. You know, you had me at frozen, quite honestly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, great so, uh, show tonight because yeah. we got a different angle on, you know, a lot of shows, a lot of people talk about new gear, but I think our take is far 
better than what we see from others. And I'm obviously biased. I, I am as well, Ken. Um, and, but we're also right. Uh, we've got guys coming on tonight and uh, from, from the industry, from the wholesale, from the retail, from the dis- distribution, they're going to bring with a, with them stats, what's moving, what's selling, what ain't. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. We don't have any manufacturers because that would obviously be a situation of bias, but skewed. what we, what we do have is three extremely knowledgeable and experienced guests who mm. fill most of the other roles in the fishing tackle supply chain. Um, like you said, we got oh, the biggest bass tackle wholesaler in the country represented. We've got one of the massive e-commerce sites out there. We've got one of the great brick and mortar retailers out there. Mm-hmm. And, and these are the people who are the least biased. Yeah, they've got products they want to move, but they, they move hundreds of brands and tonight, we're not going to have a chance to talk about more than maybe 12, 15 baits. But they're sure. the ones these guys, and these guys are all not just anglers, but serious anglers and accomplished anglers, as well as being um, involved in the, in the tackle distribution world. One's even a Bassmaster Classic competitor. Two-time Bassmaster Two Classic time. competitor. How about that? You know, one-time Classic competitors, they're a dime a dozen, man. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Pete fished the classic, for crying out loud. Twice. See that? Don't let anybody in. <laughs> I, I know better. I know. I've been to a few Bassmaster Classics. I've never qualified for one, but I've been to a few, and I know better. You got to be. You got to be really good. You might be able to stumble into one, but you do not stumble into more than one. Yes. This is true. Are we ready to bring them in, Ken? Yeah, man. First, of all, I want to tease our top ten, though. Because, you know, tonight's show is what are the best new bass lures for 2024? So naturally, our top 10 is the worst exactly. new bass lures for 2024. Exactly. Yeah. Our top 10 worst. There, there you go. If you want, you know, everybody's wondering what are the best baits that I need to, I need to invest in for this year. <coughs> We're going to tell you the ones to avoid at the end of the show in our top 10 list. Yes. So the BTC, most yeah, worst. The most worstest, 10. I believe, is the yes. proper grammatical way to say that. The most is correct, Yeah. And I think we're ready for our guests when you are. All right. All right. First man in. Uh, director of key accounts for Pittman Creek Wholesale, the world's number one distributor of bass tackle. We've got Matthew Mattingly. Hey, guys. Thank you guys for having me on. Matthew, welcome to Bass After Dark. You know, I've known Matthew for, wow, what, seven, eight years maybe? Something like that. Yeah, and uh, like that. a very young man, but a very accomplished guy in the tackle world. He runs the key accounts at Pittman Creek. So the big dog manufacturers go through this man to make sure that their products wind up at, in the retail world. So, Matthew, thank you so much for your time tonight, brother. No, I appreciate it. I'm humbled to be on here. Excited. Fantastic. BTC, who's yeah, up yeah, next? Yeah, thank you for being number one uh, there, Matthew, and coming on. Uh, we have a buyer for Omnia Fishing, an online e-tailer and tech company offering products and services to make you a better and more productive angler. we got Jacob Bros. What's going on, everybody? <laughs> thanks for having me. Matt, good to see you. What's and going on, Ryan, buddy? Thanks for having me. Doing Jacob, well, thanks so much. And, and yeah, Jacob, you and Matthew are, are alluding to the fact that uh, neither of you knew the other one would be on tonight. <laughs> no. uh, so. That's correct, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's part of the surprise, fun. though. Yeah, yes, see that surprise. magic? That was real magic that happened right there. That was real excitement. <laughs> there you go. Real energy, it, Ken. It's a very different vibe than when uh, Ben Milliken and Randy Blockett realized they were both in the same <laughs> show. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of energy there. There was some energy there. That that turned out to be an interesting show too. All right, BTC, who else we got? Uh, we have a two-time Bassmaster Classic qualifier, co-owner of Susquehanna Fishing Tackle, a brick-and-mortar retail shop. And the co-host of Tackle Shop Live on YouTube, we got Mr. George Accord Jr. Hey, hey, George. Oh. How's everybody? Hey, hey George, you, welcome sir? to the show. Now, do you know these other guys, Matthew and Jacob? I never met them in person. Uh, I've talked to Matthew on the phone once or twice over the years, but uh, yeah, no. 
we'll I know the it. guy in the middle there, BTC. <laughs> yeah, we all know him. We, That's we right. Try not, we try not to talk to him too much, but uh, yeah, BTC is, is the show. Uh, I'm just uh, I'm just an extraordinarily well dressed guy. But George, yeah, thank you so yeah. much for joining us. <laughs> I gotta and, tell you, I've, I've been watching your show since pretty much the beginning, and uh, the smoking jacket is a killer touch. I just you know. I don't know how you came up with that one, but I like it. It's approved. There, it's there's, awesome, isn't it? There are some weird things about this show, George, but uh, so far the audience has been too nice to us, and uh, they have not uh, clamored for me to to change wardrobe, so I'm sticking with it. I may add another smoking jacket at some point. I got my eye on this kind of black and red one, but I mean, another, it's your another, show. Do whatever you want, right? That, that's a fine point. Well, I got partners to answer to There's in BTC and they, Nathan. They can watch other shows if they don't like the color of your smoking jacket. Well, I don't want to drive them away if they, if they don't like the purple. Now, I will say that, that uh, BTC and Nathan uh, are the ones who chose the color because it matches our logo. Uh, but anyway, all right. BTC, I know when we, when we planned this show out, you made a great point about uh, the guests we have assembled here. And... and and getting advice and insight from these guys rather than where most viewers are, are looking for insight in the, in the YouTube world or in the commercial world. Right. Professional anglers, professional content creators. Yeah. They're, they're sponsored and beholden and they do their best to uh, be as honest as they can, but sometimes they're a little bit, you know, shills to the industry can, as you would put it. Well, what, what I would say about that is that, you know, if you're a sponsored angler and you're, let's say your, your sponsor is ABC Bait Company, no matter what you think of that lineup of baits, you've got to say good things about everything in the lineup, whether you believe it or not. And, and that's not true of this group. This group is unbeholden to an individual brand. They are working and trying to, to sell and, and support a variety of things. And these guys are all expert anglers. Um, George has been to two Bassmaster Classics. Uh, this is a great, great panel. And before we get started with individual baits, guys, I want to ask a question. And Matthew, let me start with you. Um, all right. I'm, I'm, but I'm going to make it around to all you guys. Uh, before we get to the individual baits, uh, are you seeing any clear trends in the bait world for 2024? Definitely. So we look at trends all the time, and we're very data-driven. And so I can see the sales on everything. You know, two to three years ago, we were selling a lot of the three to four inch swim baits. And now it's it's slowly getting smaller, uh, like that 2.8 size wow. is pretty much the, the most popular, you know, finesse tactics, BFS. Uh, but then you look at it, you know, that may be one, two and three. And then number four is like the six inch glide baits, the seven inch glide baits, the eight inch glide baits. So it's it's both ends of the spectrum is kind of what we're seeing that's very interesting. You know, the swim bait craze has been going on for a long, long time now. And, and to see the developments to smaller and smaller and making it more expansive across the country is very interesting. Jacob, are you seeing the same thing or what other trends are you seeing out there? I would, yeah, I'd echo what Matthew said. I think uh, there's definitely a trend in either going down in size to that 2.8 to two inch type swim bait, even, you know, soft plastics of any kind, but then mm -hmm. you've got the other side of the spectrum where we're talking, 250s we're talking chad chad bigger swim baits that are selling as fast as we can get them sometimes we can't always get them but whenever you can get them they'll sell um the other trend i'd say that we're seeing probably most prominently is forward facing sonar oh yeah in a non yeah non-political i'll just put that out there <laughs> uh, no no, no. You, you make one more statement about forward facing we're gonna get you on milliken and block it uh, i'll sit right in the middle of them I'll sit right in the middle and listen. If you sit in the middle of them, you will but not get a word in edgewise. We, we, we had that experience. You will not get a word in, Jacob, I can tell you now. That's I cool. watched it. It was, it was good. I'm glad I watched it. <laughs> George, That's what I would have done if I was in the panel. <laughs> well, no, no. We want to hear from everybody, and we're certainly going to hear. This is not an adversarial episode at all here. George, not only do you Oh, give it time, Ken. Give it time. That's right. We're going to, I hope to see a fist fight break out, but it'd probably be between me and BTC when I say something wrong. Uh, George, not only are you a top notch brick and mortar re retailer, but you also do e-commerce. What kind of trends are you seeing in, in, in your selling world? Uh, I'm going to kind of echo 
what's been said. I mean, definitely, and and the the boot foot, I call the little swim bait, the boot foot swim bait. The boot foot swim bait's not a new trend. It's it's just growing and growing and growing. Definitely going smaller. Definitely forward facing sonar driven, particularly with our online sales. Local fishing here, we don't do a ton of forward facing. There's there's enough, but it's not. We have a lot of dirty water, shallow water. Um, where it doesn't play as strong, we do have you know some pockets local walk in through the door guys, so there's a little bit of it. But kind of echoing a little bit of what was said, the big, the big swim bait, the big glide bait, the 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 rods that go with them, the reels that go with them. That's a big, that's a big growth area. Um, so forward facing type baits. Um, and the and the I know we're not I know we're talking tackle, not necessarily terminal, and the jig heads that go with them, and then the swim bait. The whole swim bait thing is just I think it's as big as it's been in in a long ever. time, and maybe ever. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and it's interesting because the swim bait business is so like direct from the manufacturer, like these small little custom swim bait shops that have these amazing baits and they do these drops and it's, you know, it's direct. Uh, yeah. You know, where the brick and mortar guy doesn't really have a bunch of that business, but some of the um, commercially made baits, like the Spro Chad Shad, for example, is, is kind of tapping into that a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sales on that have been very strong. That's actually on my list. It made the list. I've got all your lists, by the way, and uh, there's a fair amount of overlap, which I think is, is interesting and, and great because it really speaks to the quality of those baits. If all three of you guys who are, who are very disparate geographically and all come from a different part of the, the distribution industry. And here's the, the Spro bait now. Isn't that it? That's it. I have a theory on that, Ken, by the way. Yes, sir. I think to 2024, you know, which obviously for people that are watching, you know, 2024 started for us back in July. So that's when we released all the 20. So these 2024 baits, you know, we've been studying them and putting them into our inventories and trying to get them to use since July. But and, and this isn't a negative comment, but it's a it's a weak it's a weak draft class. You know, overall, as far as, you know, the timing of the year, what, what was going on, you have to look back at 2022 leading, or 2023 leading up. You know, that was a huge tackle year. Business was booming. The economy was flush. Things are kind of getting a little uncertain. Think back to July, you know, and I think it's kind of carrying through a little bit. You know, I actually, I think. I think uh, the mini iCast show, which is the Bassmasters Classic, you're going to see as much revolutionary product as you did at iCast. So I just, I'm, yeah. I just think, it's weak, I think it's a weak class this year. Well, that's it for the show tonight, guys. So <laughs> <laughs> way, to, way to go, George. Cut her down. <laughs> <laughs> Numbers just went. <laughs> well, it's still good stuff, but it's not a big pool to pick from. Yeah. Yeah, no new Senko this year. Um, yeah. I have uh, – I got something I want to get hit real quick, Ken, before I take my next question to them. Uh, this came up on the message board at the start, uh, and it's coming from maybe last week or the week before show. Uh, I want to get your guys' opinion on a bait in this, this between me and Steve <laughs> Steve on the message board, the Rocket Chad. Is that legit or not? George? The what? Rocket Shad. You mean the old Strike King bait? Yeah. Well, it certainly was legit. It was, uh, that was kind of like one of the early baits when Strike King hit an absolute home run, grand mm -hmm. slam out of the park when you literally could not get enough of them to sell. And it's, right. you know, you're tapping into something. And, and, and Ken touched on it in his monologue. You know, those old baits catch as many fish today as they did then. Just nobody uses them. Yeah. You know, and the rocket shad, I'm on the Susquehanna River, which is a shallow, smallmouth-filled 
amazing river. That rocket shad in the summer, no cool. water, just absolutely hammered fish. And you could a wade fisherman, bank fish, anybody. Here, take this out there. You're going to have fun. Yeah. Um, and it just, you know, you, once you cap something out like that, it kind of goes into obscurity. <laughs> there it is. There's his comment. But uh, that, George, thank you very much. I appreciate that. There you go, Steve. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we need to even go any further with that. So how did you guys come up with your picks for tonight's show? Matthew? So, again, I look at everything that's selling. And um, conversely, I hear guys like George calling into the sales office all day long asking for different lures and stuff like that. And so, one, the amount of calls that we're getting on certain lures and things like that. Uh, two, we looked, I looked all the way back to the last podcast and seen what, uh, what lures made a big bang when they came out. Or – also, what lures are we still struggling getting that are so popular? And so it's just a, it's just a big mix of everything is how I kind of came up with it. Jacob, what about you? How did you decide which baits you were going to hit us with tonight? Similar to, similar to Matt, I tried to look at sales volume since last July of products that were either available shortly before July or right after. Um, I also tried to look at and maybe get something in there that wasn't as mainstream potentially, or hopefully um, I felt like a lot of the new product we got last year was very driven by the heavy hitters within the industry. There wasn't a ton of that niche small stuff um, that came out. I'm hoping at the classic, maybe there's some, a bit more of that that we're seeing already starting to, some of that starting to pop up. Um, as the economy does stable out a little bit, uh, some of those smaller companies are able to get their product development cycles going again. Um, but yeah, I, I tried to try to look at the sales data and then also potentially the missed sales data of what, what did we miss out on? What underproduced and, and did not, uh, what, what didn't we find the ceiling on? What baits didn't we find the ceiling on and pulled together the best list I thought I could. You know, I think, George mentioned iCast, or, or we talked about the you know the classic. Of course, is the the biggest consumer tackle show. The classic expo is the biggest consumer tackle show in America, and Bass will claim it draws one hundred and fifty thousand people. I don't believe that. I think that's <laughs> probably somewhere around double what the number is, but it's still a lot of people. It's still a lot of people, and, uh, and then we look at iCast, which is the biggest trade show the industry has, and. Uh, and, and I, I noticed that, that on y'all's list, everybody had at least one bait of the two that won for best freshwater lures last year at ICAST. How important to your purchases that you're trying to sell to your audiences is a win at, at the ICAST New Product Showcase? George, does that, is that a player for you? Uh, in, in certain cases it is. Um, you know, first of all, you know, we're a pretty hardcore shop. Our consumer is a, a very sharp customer. So, you know, they're going to see right through um, a weak offering. You but mean like it, a spider or a bat or a duck? <laughs> yeah, you're kind of picking up when I'm laying down there, brother. Um, <laughs> you know, for example, um, there's a lot of best of shows there, you know, they just keep adding more categories. And I mean, I don't want to sound like negative, but it's bought and paid for in a lot of cases. And, you know, the consumer picks up on that. The consumer is, is savvy. Okay. So if it's, if it's a, a product that mer that truly merits that, I think it's a big deal. If it's uh, something that, you know, is a duck or a bat or a spider. <laughs> um, although I will say the gizmo did fool me. Okay. I'm just going to put it on record. That <laughs> gizmo caught me a little underaware. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of how I feel about it anyways. Jacob, I look at the iCast winners from last year and in best hard lure, it was the uh, Z-Man Chatterbait Elite EVO. Legit. Bladed jig. 
And, and in, yeah. in soft lure, it was the Berkeley Powerbait Nessie. Legit soft plastic glide bait, you know, kind of a new category, if you will. And, and it wasn't a bat or a duck or a spider like it so often is. Is, is, does that reflect a trend in the industry that, uh, that the industry is trying to get more practical because they anticipate maybe tougher economic times or, or what did you make of that? I think there's a part of it. I mean, I think that the nine inch Nessie comes in at 1299 or 1499, something like that. It's a pretty for a nine inch price swim point. Bait. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they definitely went for the everyday angler or at least hoping to get that into the hands of an everyday angler i think a, a six plus inch hard bait glide bait would be it, it definitely eliminates a lot of people just the you've got bigger hooks it's a bigger you need a specialized rod for it a soft bait might be an easier thing to get into um, i think that's where part of that comes into it it's going to be a little bit more durable potentially in terms of if you've got someone that's not as experienced throwing it around boat docks, they could hit a post and you're not going to shatter a expensive bait. I think that Don't plays talk to me about that. I, I shattered <laughs> a, uh, a, a DRT uh, Clash 9 Ooh. on a, a bridge a piling. That, that hurt me. Did you I'm hurt? still trying to recover from that. See, Ken, this is why you always got to have a GoPro running. <laughs> <laughs> faced in what? your face so you <laughs> like, can see me so you can see me cry oh my god that's no I good would, i would love to see that matthew Amazing. what about what about matthew i see you at every eye cast uh, i know you're you're making the rounds you're seeing as much as you possibly can do the okay. winners of the new product showcase at iCast? does that impact any of your decision making oh absolutely absolutely i mean we we take a whole team down there with us and we're placing orders as soon as things are announced. Um, and it's, it's kind of like what George said earlier, too. There's a lot of times we'll walk in that new product showcase, and you're like, yeah, that's, that's probably going to win. Um, so we're, we're going ahead. We're, we're calling the office. We're placing orders that very next day. Uh, we're going ahead and making our, uh, our flyers up to the dealers, to the retailers. And that, that, that way they can go ahead and put it on order as well. And, uh, I mean, shoot – the uh, the Chad Chad was released in 22 at iCast. We placed orders that very day, and uh, the the crazy part is sometimes you won't see that product. I don't think we've seen any of it till almost the next July. Wow. Uh, but uh, but yeah, no, it's a we're we're a little bit different. So it's like that that spider year, the duck year, all the the gimmicky type stuff. Just to Bad. be honest. Um, yeah, we, we did pretty well on, on that stuff. Now it, it kind of sucks cause you know, the, the consumer sees through some of the gimmicky stuff and it doesn't, and doesn't buy it again, but, uh, the, <laughs> the, 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 the is going to be pretty cool. Uh, like Jacob was saying, I mean, it comes in five, seven and nine. It's pr pretty easy on the, on the wallet for the retail side of things. And, and, uh, was, was really excited to see that. I'd, I'd, I'd love to have a truckload of them. <laughs> right yeah. now i'm sure jacob oh, yeah. would too and george would too and for the consumer they're available you know unlike yeah. some baits yep. from japan which it, i don't understand why you know the nessie got they got a lot of heat for uh that for basically looking like a flag 150 but raid okasana's okas osakana slide 170 it's the same exact bait Mega Bass has the same bait. They don't get any hate. We can't well, get into that. What, what's wrong with these people that hate on their own country? It, it's a whole thing. I don't even know what to call. I have, I don't know. It's anyhow. So how about we get I into think some picks before argument, I go down I think, I think the fact that it's available in the U.S., both with, I mean, I Thank had you. a couple other baits in here that if it's available in the U.S. and it's a U.S., oh. I don't want to say manufacturer, but a U.S. company that's making it and mass producing it to the people that want it at a both a mass price and yeah. mass availability, then I do think it is a separate product. I think that's where the separation comes in, where the flag has its own niche. It's that person can still get that product, yeah, when it's available. But well, yeah, for the everyday yeah. person that wants it or wants to try that type of product or that category, yeah. 
I think there's a space for that to exist too. Yeah. And as soon as we start eliminating all the knockoffs from our tackle collections, we got nothing left to fish with, guys. <laughs> nothing. There's exactly. just nothing. That's a that's a big trend we've seen too in the industry is you know techniques and lures coming from other countries like Japan and filtering in and coming you know coming here. That's been a big thing the past two to three years. BTC, you going to kick us off here? Uh huh. I'm going to stop reading the comments. Um, <laughs> so, so why don't we get into picking some baits? Um, George, why, start with you, buddy. What do you got? Number one on the list. I got to come out. I got to come out guns blazing, huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> well, I kind of broke my list down into like trends. <laughs> like, um, what are the top trends that I'm seeing? And, you know, the other thing I wanted to say before I got into anything was, for the audience, you know, 24, again, started back in July of 23. So some of this stuff you may have seen for a while, but it's still mm. considered 24, right? Yes. Um, and like Matthew said, even like the chat chat was introduced in 22, but it might as well have been introduced in 23. Um, so with that all being said, uh, and I try to stay away from the big houses as much as possible just because they're so mass produced. I'm going to start out with a big house. I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but probably got a picture of the chatter chatterbait spike from Z man. Well, you know, I, I put that in a trend of like the straight tail trailer, mm -hmm. right? So obviously designed for bladed jig chatterbait. Um, you know, uh, you get a lot more movement out of your chatterbait with a straight tail bait. Now, I mean, I started fishing the missile hog farmer bait, which I thought was great. Um, and the reason I picked this bait is, you know, you take your, your, your chatterbait and you put an Elaztec trailer on it, you're locked up and good to go for, I mean, it can be days of fishing. So from a convenience factor, I've had really good success with this bait personally. Our customer base loves it. Um, we've sold through multiple shipments of it. Um, yeah, so I'm going to start out start out nice and slow, build it up a little later. I'm going to start out with the straight tail trailer trend, and I'm going to give my number one star to the Z-Man chatter spike love the choice george i, I love a straight tail kind of non-obtrusive trailer on a bladed jig it allows that bladed jig to hunt or do whatever it's going to do now i gotta say neither jacob nor matthew had this on their list but i want to get their take on it jacob you're up what do you think of the the chatter spike it almost made my list i had a, a competitor <laughs> straight tail on my straight tail trailer on mine that we can get to at some point but and we, uh, I, I like that we Z-Man I like that Z-Man went and did that. I think they did it their own way by having the joints in it. It's different than a spunk shed. Um, it's obviously a similar similar product, but it, it is definitely different. They've got their own colors, and obviously with Elaztec, you're going to put that on there and go through how many fish before you need a new one. There you go, Matthew. I don't think I don't think Z-Man makes any junk. I think uh, I have a tremendous amount of respect for Daniel Nussbaum, Glenn Young. Corey Schmidt. Absolutely. That fan team, they're amazing. Yeah, fantastic guys. Um, no, that's that's it's an awesome take on it. Like George was saying, you the the missile bait spunk shad. Uh, you got the you know, se several different iterations of the the straight tail trailers now. And I mean that heck that even goes back for several years, starting out with um, uh, like a like a Zayco. I mean, you can look at some of them that were kind of segmented like that. And it's, it seems like there's a lot of companies out there that are making their own. I mean, Z-Man had the Razor Shad before, but I definitely like the Chatter Spike a little bit more than I do the Razor Shad. There you go. BTC. I have to check that out because I like the uh, Razor Shad. Um, well, I don't know. What's our next pick? Well, we started with George, so we want to go to Jacob. Let's go to Jacob. Jacob. What you got, Jacob? All right. I will... Nathan's I'll got go along pictures, with the trend so... of starting. Okay, I've got baits laid out here on my coffee table too. I didn't know if we needed to give visuals or whatnot, but <laughs> um, 
we'll go along with the trend of starting or keeping it with the big uh, predominant companies. One of the new ones, not an ICAST release, but uh, more, much more recently is the Berkeley Credge. Ah, yes. Yes, indeed. Well, here we go. It, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, made, the it made the list for a lot of reasons. Made the list for a lot of reasons. Um, and not just your list, Jacob. That is also a Matthew good. Mattingly's list. That is. All right. Nice job, Matt. Nice job. <laughs> but but tell, tell us what you like about the credge, Jacob. Because I think it's an impressive I, bait. Go ahead. I think so, too. I, I've yet to fish it. Obviously, we have here in the cities in Minnesota, we've got about 10, 12 yeah. inches of ice. So we have not gotten to get it out on the water. But uh, based on videos and stuff, it's pretty cool. And I see myself even this past summer wishing I had a product like this. And yeah. when I saw it come out and got introduced to it in late summer, when we got shown some of the videos, I was like, I, that's a very cool bait. Matthew, um, you live far enough south that you still have water in its liquid form. Have you had a chance to fish the credge? I have. So I'm going to be honest with you. When the pure fishing guys came to us and showed us this, I'm like, and they were telling me what it, what it does. I was like, I mean, like the old school flying lure, you know what I'm talking about? Like that used to be on the, <laughs> the, the 1 a.m. Yeah. commercial. Oh, yeah. Know? And, and so I was, I was like, and it had, it was got the funky lip on it and the whole nine yards. Was like, man, that's, I, I don't know about that. Uh, but honestly, just like Jacob was talking about, you know, they, they did a great job with the marketing side of it. They did the videos and stuff. Um, I, I, I got to sneak out with one sample because <laughs> we're just now starting to filter these through the warehouse and stuff and get a few in. Um, but it's, it's pretty legit. So it, to me, it solves a problem. So with like the forward facing sonar stuff, uh, before I've got buddies that will take like the suspend dots and they'll put them on the very tail end of that uh, jerk bait to make it do basically the same thing. And, mm -hmm. and with this, you can take it straight out the package and it'll go, you know, you can put it right back in that fish's face that's following it or that has hesitated or something like that. So like I said, it solves the problem. It's cool. It's unique. It's really in demand right now. I promise you uh oh, but yeah. yeah but like i said whenever i first looked at it i was like are you kidding me i mean just it, it looks really funky but no i'm 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 digging it it does now i had a chance to go uh, on a berkeley media junket a couple of weeks ago to houston this they held the whole thing basically in the houston space center so it was very impressive and they were they were kind of comparing their technology with the technology that took us to the moon and beyond um, yeah, japan never been to the moon I'm sorry. <laughs> until last week, but oh, damn it. <laughs> no, but yeah, was, and I got a chance to get out on the water with it a little bit and see it. And uh, not only is it does it as you say fall away like a like a flying lure would, but it, if you if you pop it up and keep it up near the surface, it's actually a pretty enticing looking mm -hmm. wake bait. Now, yep. Georgia didn't make your list, but have you had a chance to try out the credge yet? Uh, I have not. I I. Uh one of the elite series guys that we sponsor, I gave him all my samples um, for him to try out, but it is based on a Jackal riser bait is where the whole thing came from. I mean, you know, like last year, the elite on Hartwell, I believe it was, it was interesting because the riser bait became the bait of choice. And a lot of people thought it was because it was being used top water on schooling fish. It was not. It was being used forward facing, cast it out, let it sink. And one of the things that the credge does that the riser bait does is when you reel it or twitch it, it will slowly rise up and then you can let it fall. And then so you can really maintain depth control. You know, if you spent much time on forward facing, you know, you see the fish, you cast your bait, you see the bait sinking, you see the bait sinking, and, and your goal is to bring the bait above that fish. This, this, these kind of products are awesome because they provide such great control in a hard bait. Yeah, you, know, you can do it with a jig head and a plastic, no problem. But you know, I mean, jerk bait's going to go diving. This bait's actually going to sink, and you're going to control it with little lifts and drops and lifts and drops. The drops are going to track backwards. The riser bait, I don't think, is going to backfall on you as much. I'm not sure I'm totally, like, 
thinking that's the deal breaker. But that was so ingenious. That was that was like the number one ingenious thing that happened on on the tour last year. Somebody taking that riser bait, which sinks pretty quick, and doing that. Now, obviously, with a lot of these companies like Jackal, you know, availability is a major concern. It's a major issue. I don't know what the deal is, um, but yeah, what what is? Can we stop right there for a second? Yeah. What? Why? Why is it so difficult to get some of these baits from overseas from some of these companies? You know, I mean, it, it, does it, anyone want to give an honest answer? <laughs> I mean, I, <laughs> um, production's going somewhere else. How's that for an honest answer? Uh, yeah. yeah, I think there's I'm a sorry. bit of gatekeeping involved as well. There's a bit of gatekeeping. There, it's yeah, they have a job to do as well. If they're comfortable selling X number and they don't want to get X, Y, and Z, yeah, uh, us telling them that we can sell X, Y, and Z doesn't matter to them. Yeah, yeah there's they look down their nose at these guys. Yeah, I, I mean. Go ahead. I was going to say a lot of these big manufacturers are warehousing tremendous amounts of inventory that is costing them millions in storage, insurance, and things like that. They are losing their shirts right now. Yeah, there. Yeah, there's a lot of them that's still stuck with you know some COVID inventory and stuff because we had such great couple of years and, and everything. And there's a lot of I mean super big companies that are they're they're watching their spend and the, the whole nine yards. So they're just like Jacob said, they're they're ordering what they know they can sell instead of what they think they can sell. Well, I think if you look at, uh, like, we're talking about Jackal, and you can take, the trend is growing, you can look at Evergreen. You know, these are companies that are using American companies to do their warehouse and distribution. So they've they've worked out whatever deal they've worked out, irregardless of the bait. And, you know, they don't have to have warehousing expenses they don't have to have staffing expenses you know they're they're just paying someone else in the form of percentage to process so they're saying listen i got this much space in my warehouse for you and whatever fits in that space you're welcome to put in there and then they're saying okay well i want it this this and this and this and this like for example go back to jackal you know the hottest Arguably, underground, spoken of, fat, forward-facing bait is the drift fry. Go try to buy some. Now, Jackal is set up to distribute through Shimano. Why they're not sending over those big mega carrier, tanker, freighter, container ships full of these drift fries... It's got to be something other than the dollars and the cents, right? So I, I look back, and I'm like, you know, I've never been to Japan. I've never seen Jackal. But I'm thinking they're a pretty small footprint. And they only have so much manufacturing. You only get so much done in a day. They're probably not right. being made in Japan, by the way. Well, I don't know. <laughs> you might be right. Uh, it's hard to make anything in Japan, even at the same price you could make it in the U.S., well, I'm so, sitting in front yeah. of a case full of Shimano reels and I can pick up a few of them that say Japan on them, but they don't all. <laughs> no, they do not all. They don't all. <laughs> all, right, all right, Matthew, what you got for us? What do you want to show us first from your group? Oh, man. Choose I'd, wisely, Matt. No. Yeah, I didn't really rank mine or anything like that. <laughs> no I need. Just, no you know, need. I had a whole big list and I was like, man, we're not going to get to talk about all this stuff. By the way, Matthew uh, sent the longest list. It was 74. I, no, I'm kidding. It was, <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, not, you're not far off. A part of me what? believed you. Part of me <laughs> believed you. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, yeah, the list was pretty long. No, it was like it was like fourteen <laughs> when we we decided to pare it down to just baits and not not any terminal tackle items. I think I think Matthew's list is like fourteen <laughs> items. Yeah, I want to I want to come back to the terminal show too. Yes, um, of course. I, it's I guess it's not as sexy as what the credge is or anything like that, but I'm gonna go Yamatanuki. Ah, there you go. That's now that, list, <laughs> that is a bait on everyone's list, Matthew. So if there were cool. a prize for uh for guest who nails it, you just won. Yeah. So how, how I mean, long has the Yamatanuki been out? Uh so the original version, um guys correct me if I'm wrong, 
the original version came out last March at the Classic down in Knoxville. Right. And then they later came out. They seen the success of that thing. And uh, I don't know. It's probably been three or four months after that. Around the iCast time, they came out with a two-and-a-half-inch version. Yeah. I, I meant how long has Yamamoto been making it? Oh, years. I mean, they they brought it from, from overseas. I mean, look, there's a – there's a lot of they've their, kept it from here for a long time. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Well, but, you uh, know, Brian, why are you why are you talking oh, about Yamamoto it. like it's a Japanese company? It's not a Japanese oh, no. company. <laughs> it's an American they, they company the, out of out of Page, Arizona. Japan. That's right. They kept the bait in Japan, though. Yeah, they and they they do that with they they make a really cool um, a lipless crankbait that has never seen the American market. Uh, but anyway, yeah, they're an American company out of Page, Arizona. Gary Yamamoto was born in Hawaii. Um, it's, a, it's like Smith. But we talk about them like they're Japanese. I'm sorry, Matthew. Please, please go on. I apologize for interrupting you. No, <laughs> it's, it, it's all good. There's a lot of people that wouldn't know they're made in Page, Arizona. And, uh, you know, they're they're owned by GSM now. So. Yeah, GSM's got it now. Yeah, owned by GSM. But, uh, I mean, just that that was one of the craziest launches I'd seen in a little while. Uh, especially of a soft plastic and it kind of um there, there were some so it's I, I there's some people that call it the the poop category right so i call <laughs> it i mean it just i mean that's i mean you can search the internet yes. and that's that's what it is but uh it's really just heavy soft plastic what and does so it, it do in the water not much <laughs> not a thing <laughs> not much catches um, fish yeah that that's it that's it it's something that they haven't seen an awful lot of and it's very simple to use. I mean, use a weedless. Uh, you can you can put it on a Ned rig, but it's just going to fall straight over. Uh, but so most people just put it on an EWG hook and go at it. And there's no wrong way to fish it. But it kind of started a whole the cover set cover scat started it really honestly. Um, yeah. But this is more mainstream. It made it more prevalent. And then you know after this you had like the missile baits bomba. And, and, and several other, you know, companies that came out with their own version of a heavy plastic. But, uh, I mean, it was a pretty crazy launch. We sold everything we could get our hands on, especially that three and a half for uh, the first couple months. And then the two and a half was a pretty good launch, too. Jacob, you've got it on your list. What is it you like about the Yama Tanuki? I'm sorry, Yama. Yeah, Yama Tanuki. Yeah, I think yep. I got it right. Yeah. Yeah. It went, it went through the roof. For probably through September, I'd say, and we've seen it slow down a bit. Seen it slow down a little bit, but it definitely deserves to be on the list for how hot it came out of the gates. And it, it wasn't a. I mean, we we carry Omnia carries depths. I we buy depths. The cover sure. scat did okay. I did not expect that. The Yamatanuki would do what it did. So based on the fact that it caught me by surprise as much, and it, I think it caught everyone by surprise, um, that's what I think justified it to be on my list. George, what about you? This is uh, one of the rare unanimous choices. Yeah, I put it on my list, um, even though, you know, you could argue, is it a, is it a 2023 ICAST release? I feel as though it is because of the timing of it, but I got to tell you, Echoing, echoing uh, everybody else's. We we rolled these things out of here like I'm telling you, man. It was uh, people were busy working in here getting these things out the door. And <laughs> you know the the technique. I call I call it the high density plastic trend. And the technique that is so much nicer than poop category. It Thank is. You. <laughs> Sorry guys. <laughs> I'm trying to dress it up a little bit, Ken. Or as or as Brian calls it, the excrement category. I just think yes. that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the in 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 the the technique, the way it was designed to be fished, weightless. You know, it's a painstakingly slow presentation, which you know doesn't oh. really jive with most fishermen. Most fishermen want a chunk and wind. Um, I think two of the things that made it the fact that you could skip it like nobody's business. Mm -hmm. Don't say business in the poop category, George. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Poor choice of verbiage. Let's keep it clean, please, guys. And, yes, and the two and a half inch, again, having having a strong, strong, small mouth presence in, in my part of the world, the 
two and a half inch, smoked it. Yeah. They were putting them on Ned heads and just absolutely crushing smallmouth. Even though that thing falls over, no, as I think Matthew current. said. You're washing in the current. You know, picture it washing in the current. You know, does anything stand up? It's tumbling. It's rolling. <laughs> so I'm sure smallmouth eat as many sticks as they do crayfish. <laughs> um, and that bad boy did work. And, you know, it, it, it got – you know, a lot of stuff will sell on that initial sell-through. This thing – reordered real well mm -hmm. yep. guys were catching fish. they developed confidence in it they came back <laughs> you know and still now obviously it's way off of the original launch date but you know we just took in a, a pretty good size yamamoto order and i i was actually helping process it and there was a bunch of yama tanukis in it so you know those guys are buying it based upon the data so mm. right um, it's still, still popping along. It's actually, in my opinion, and we carry the other brands that the, that the gentlemen have mentioned. In my opinion, it owns the category. Oh, very cool. As uh, I would agree, George. Uh, how about your opinion as an angler? Uh, straight up, total honesty. I don't like to fish slow, so I don't. <laughs> uh, uh, I chuck. There you go, chunker and what? I like. Hey, I like your style, George. I'm with you, brother. <laughs> Jacob, no pressure, but there's one other lure that is on your list, Matthew's list, and George's list. Do you want to take a stab at that or just take us any direction you want to go with your next pick? I like that. Yeah, it's, I mean, not, it's, not, got it. it's not the Nessie that we've already talked about. It, it's Can not the that Nessie off? that you've already okay, talked I'll about. I'll take that out of contention. So, but, I, but we do need to cover the Nessie at some point. But just if you want to, if you want to <laughs> take a stab at it, the, the, next, the only other unanimous choice – Mm. There is just one. You want to take a stab? Go for it, brother. Crush City? No. Rapport? Let's go Crush City, but no, it's not Crush City. It's not Crush City. As a matter of fact, right. bad news. You're the only guy who chose really? the Rapala Crush City soft plastic series. Man, I wanted but to put that are. on there, but there's five styles, so I'm like, but, I can't pick one. But Matthew That's already right. had 74 selections. <laughs> 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 What's like, 79, what? Matt? We What's simply 79? couldn't allow. Right, right. <laughs> if you got to 74 and you couldn't get to 79, then uh, I don't know what to tell you. All right, now this is from Rapala, and this is their first effort in soft plastics that I can think of since the old Trigger X era. Yeah. Um, Jacob, take us, tell us about this and why you like it. I like it. Uh, I think uh, Rapala did... I would say they exceeded our expectations in terms of the quality of the bait. I think the rap was always great at right out, right out of the gate in terms of marketing. They always do a great job of pushing it right away. Um, I think this one will have a much more long-term long-term life to it than maybe some other new products that we've seen. Um, I think they've got shapes that are relevant in the Bronco bug and freeloader. Obviously, Jacob Wheeler did some damage with the freeloader last year and had a lot of hype behind that. Um, playing with it in the fish tank the last couple of weeks, it's pretty cool. Um, we did not receive those since ice. I, I guess I haven't gotten to play with them in water. Um, I've fished the Bronco bug. I've fished the cleanup craw. Both have caught fish pretty well. Um, I, think they, I think they did a, a nice job of the assortment that they came out with. It's wide, but it's not extravagant i think they tried to nail down their top colors and and do a good job to get those colors and not go too shallow in any of them um we'll see if rapala's consumer is different than others where you know with a with a rage product there might be certain colors that outsell others we'll see if rapala's consumer is similar you know, those those mainstay colors are consistent between the brands um yeah, I, I, I like it. That, that's a lot of good support there. Matthew, what do you think of the... You said you Jacob, almost listed Jacob, this, but you, I guess Jacob, you ran Jacob. out of ink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my, my pen ran out. Um, no, I'm just like Jacob said, I think Rapala did their homework. I said Rapala right, didn't I? Because we say Rapala down here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you don't want to do that. You got to say Rapala. Here. They, yeah, they, yeah I, I talked to a couple of guys up there. They don't care how you say it as long as you say it. No. And... Uh, <laughs> But no, seriously, they did a phenomenal job with the marketing. They did their homework on the shapes. 
Um, you know, I, they, they've got a you know a plan to to release more in the same lineup in the in the future, and uh, they they're really smart and got got you know guys like Jacob Wheeler promoting it. I mean, that's why the freeloader's been so great so far. As you know, it's got the most uh, attention. He he probably won the most on that bait out of the, the whole lineup. But uh, but yeah, they they did their homework. They did great on the shapes and stuff, and it's selling well. BTC, I think all, I cut you off earlier. Yeah, all all knockoffs. Um, the shapes, the colors, all knockoffs. According to the message board, everything. <laughs> I won't I won't dispute that. I won't dispute that. I mean, yeah. But, Matter of fact, but everything. Your jacket's a knockoff, Ken. Exactly, but it was worn by my clone, so it doesn't count that it's a knockoff. <laughs> um, what is it? Uh, you, there, exactly there is nothing that's not a knockoff i think in my entire in the last 30 years i've only seen a few baits that i didn't think were were knockoffs on some level we're talking about you know the senko really wasn't a knockoff we're talking about the chatterbait wasn't a knockoff although the chatterbait was a the the, the child of the walker special and the uh, whopper stopper dirty bird i bet you george remembers those baits i do and, not Okay, George is not as old as I am. But I'm going to tell you something, Ken. I was day one on the Chatterbait, brother. Oh yeah, you had. I mean, that that thing was fabulous. I mean, I was OG. I was OG with the original builder of the Chatterbait. I was selling Ron Davis. Ron Davis, right from his house in big giant boxes. There you go. I had a pro staffer who was fishing those three tournaments down in Florida that Brian Thrift. I think he won two of them. And my man called me up and said, uh, I don't know what this chatterbait thing is, but you better figure it out. Yeah. A lot and, of the- and, and he earned his yearly stipend right there on the spot because uh, we got in on that bad boy from day one. Uh, an amazing bait, a revolutionary That's bait. Incredible. Mark Jeffries at uh, Bass Zone did a, a, a 20 feet deep a documentary about the bait that I would recommend everybody check out. And a lot of people don't realize that guys like Brian Thrift and Andy Montgomery uh, and other giants of the game were making those baits at Ron Davis's kitchen table for him in exchange. They weren't being paid in money. They were being paid in baits so they could go win money. And they did. Oh yeah. So, but, but that's yeah, wild. that's it's like, it's like going and pick, pick your own apples or something, right? Yeah. Like they were, do dishes to get baits. All right, George, uh, you're up, and you've got a chance to select the other unanimous pick. And if you don't, if you miss, if you miss, Matthew could sweep the category in double jeopardy here. The unanimous pick is the gravel dog. No, sir. A gravel dog for a thousand X, Alex. <laughs> there is one other vote for the gravel dog, the Strike King gravel dog crankbait, and that was from Matthew Mattingly. But uh, no, tell us what you like about the gravel dog. Uh, I'm, I have not thrown the gravel dog yet. Um, you know, we had an event here at the shop a couple weeks ago, and we actually had Kevin Van Dam come in, work the mm-hmm. event. And, you know, if you know Kevin, he's an honest dude. And, you know, we were talking in the back room, some of the guys, before he had to hop a a car to his plane. And, you know, it was the same thing he told me about the 1.5. When he told me about the 1.5, like a year before the 1.5 came out, he gave me one. He told me what it did. He told me how it hunted, and it did. Same thing here. So I'm going to take the man at his word. Um, you know, plus they have him. I think the gravel dog is going to be. We actually got gravel dogs in ahead of that event, um, probably because he was coming here. And if it's any indication of what's going to go on sales wise, double your orders, gentlemen, because it's about to go down. All right, Jacob, you're the one guy who didn't have the gravel dog. And I realized that you, you're, I mean, I know you have a ton of respect for, ah, there you there go. go. I had it. Didn't make <laughs> the it. list. I had but it. It's, it's within arm's reach. I like that. <laughs> What's your take on the gravel dog? Uh, it's, I don't want to say it's a knock, but I mean, it's, it's going right after <laughs> that. <mid-dive. laughs> it's going right after it. I mean, uh, I think they did a nice job with the colors. They did. Uh, there's a bunch of 
gravel dog exclusive colors in there that are more springtime craw orange red crankbaits um it's not a trend that we fish up here necessarily because our season's closed but obviously down south it's a much bigger deal sure um we did get we got gravel dogs in and we've turned them a couple times and it's selling a whole lot better than i would have guessed a mid diving crankbait to sell so far from what we've seen the last year ish where hard baits have sort of where your average crankbaits maybe slowed down a little bit this one came out of the gate hot really hot impressive matthew you did have the gravel dog on on your list tell us uh, what you like about it i did so i i got to see it pretty early uh over at Pittman we're full line striking so we stock everything every color every size that they make uh kind of the same situation george was in you know we uh, we had Kevin up for an event, our, our fall dealer show, and I got to talk to him a little bit about it. And uh, But just, just seeing it, it's kind of like striking's answer to a, a Storm Wiggle Ward or a Rock Crawler or something like that, which has been super hot. You know, th- those other brands have been super hot for us, and they sell really, really well in, in, in the south and southeast and, and in the Ozarks area as well. And uh, But it, it's a little bit different. It's got a little bit different body shape. The – the the angle of the bills a little bit different and i think the cool yeah. thing is is they kind of went the the rapala approach and did a eight and a ten uh versus some of the other ones they come in one size originally and um and stuff so i can kind of look at this one i can have eights and tens in my box and just depending on how deep i'm fishing i can pick up whichever one pretty quickly and and uh, stuff and like jacob said the colors are awesome they did great on the color schemes or, I mean, everybody's going to sell a ton of them. George hit it right on the head. I mean, if it's if the initials are any indication, it's going to be hot. Yep. Well, yeah, you know, I got a couple things. Yeah, man. When, when you're ready. Did you have a follow-up? No. no. Well, all right. Um, just hiring, Jessica hiring in the YouTube comments says, who throws crankbaits now that we have forward-facing sonar? Ah. Yeah, what's a crankbait again? Tell me about those. It's <laughs> a fantastic question. Um, it is into that. It, it's, we've we've seen it. We've seen it. Are you guys seeing a, a diminishment in, in traditional crankbait sales because of forward facing? Matthew shakes his head no. We no. no. Well, regardless, let's just give a shout out to Jessica Herring on the message board. There Jessica, she is. No, that's, that's, that's a great question. question. Thank you, Jessica, everybody. Big another fan. question would be who who pitches and flips because well anyway. We're going to do that in another show. Um, let's go back. We got to go back to Matt. Oh, sorry. One more. Another, another. This, one, more, this more. one's for you. <laughs> this one's for you, Ken. Illuminathan79 on the message board said Hedden had a chatterbait in 1930. I'm not aware of anything approximating a chatterbait out of Hedden in 1930. Okay. Uh, when I think of the chatterbait, I do think of a marriage between a bait called the Walker Special, which if you imagine the chatterbait blade with a treble hook on the back of it, it was really designed as a schooling bait for white bass and stuff like that. That was part of it. And then Whopper Stopper, which was a company out of Texas, mostly in the 60s and 70s, had a bait called the Dirty Bird, which uh, had a fixed blade coming out of the head of a plastic abdomen. And it was uh, a really poorly balanced bait and all. But if you combine those two baits together, you get the chatter bait. And I think that's what Ron Davis may have ultimately had in mind. Matthew Mattingly, we're coming back to you, man. Uh, and you have a chance to snag both of the double jeopardies here. If you can just pick the one, the one bait that is on everyone's list tonight, yours, Jacob's, and George's list, what do you think that is? Well, I'm sitting here looking at my list, and you said the word probably 50 times. What about the Z-Man Chatterbait Evo? Gentlemen, he's just done it. Let's how, how about a hand for Matthew Mattingly? <laughs> nice work, man. Nice work. Well, they they, they kind of threw it up, and I kind of teed it off. So, okay, the Z-Man Chatterbait Elite EVO or Evo. Uh, tell us about it? that. And and is Evo just short for evolution? I I'm going to be honest with you. I just assume. Um, so I was always a big fan of the elites. And then of course the jackhammers came out and they were 1799 to 2199, depending on where you were in the country and how bad you wanted one. Uh, um, so, but, and they're a fantastic chatterbait. 
But this sucker right here, I actually, you know, I actually went down to uh, Florida last week and got to fish one, and they're pretty legit. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of them. Like I said, I was always a big fan of the Elite personally. Uh, this, this makes a jackhammer esque chatterbait much, much more affordable. I mean, to, to me, it, you know, it's, it swims and, and thumps a lot of the same. It's got big eyes on it. It's got a great uh, keeper on there. I mean, it's, it's, it's a really, really well made chatterbait. And, and like, like I said, it, it, like I said, it basically made a, made a jackhammer a lot more affordable to people. It's like nine or 10 bucks, right? Yes. Yeah. It's so, 9.99. Yeah. Half the price of the, uh, uh, of the jackhammer george it was on your list as well it was um so what we're seeing is great sales on it um and we we do have fishing here you know we're we, we, we're we're lucky enough to not get ice um and we've had we've had this bait kind of early we got in on the very first shipment so our customers had a chance to really run it through the paces uh it's great bait it's you know part of what makes a bait like a new successful launch is colors. Colors are so important for catching fish and catching fishermen and, and for a fisherman's confidence level and thought process. And what grabbed me on this bait right off the get before I learned anything else about it was copper blades. Ah, Very first thing was copper blades. As soon as I saw copper blades, because when I first heard, read about it, in the initial release from Z-Man, you know, uh, spreadsheet-wise, I'm like, eh. But as soon as I saw and looked in and saw the copper blade, I knew we were onto something. Then I've had a chance to fish it a few times, and it's legit. It's a legit. <coughs> it's it's not a whole lot different than a than a jackhammer, um, other than the colors. It's quality. It's on my list. There's a reason it's on all three of our lists. Um, it's 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 a winner. I tell you, one thing I, I really admire about Z-Man is their absolutely unprecedented ability to reinvent this lure. Every year or two, they come out with a new iteration of it, and I think, well, surely they've gone to the well <laughs> more often than they can get away with, and um, I'm wrong every time. That's I'm what I thought. wrong every time. Yeah. So kudos. They've done a good to, job, even with TRD and coming out with new TRD heads every year. They yes, sir. They yes. do that. They do a really good job at that. Yes, they're yeah. they're way smart. There, like I was saying earlier, uh, Daniel Nussbaum, Glenn Young, uh, Jose Chavez, uh, Corey Schmidt. They're mm -hmm. killing it. They're killing it. Yeah, it's good stuff. Matt, when you, you fished do? down in Florida, did you like the the bait keeper more than a jackhammer? Double lead versus the the spikes. I don't know, but it, but it, it seemed like it held up pretty well. I didn't, you know, I, I was I played around with several different trailers from the Zayco to uh, some chatter spikes. I had some razor shads, uh, just like BTC. I'm pretty pretty big fan of the the razor shad initially. Um, do, I, do, do I use I use the uh, the Zoom Shimmer Swimmer or Shimmer Shad. Sorry, I mis misspoke on that one. Shimmer Shad that came out. Um, they all held up pretty well. I mean, I didn't go through a ton of trailers or anything other than me just wanting to swap different ones out, and it held it on there pretty well. I mean, I've got to go down to Bienville Plantations where I, where I was, and, uh, of course, you know, going down there, you get to catch a ton of fish so and, and play around with some different lures and stuff. So we put them through the paces, and I was pretty impressed with it. Does it hunt you? Um, or you got to modify, do some things, just that, the third. I'm going to be a thousand percent honest with you. Tell you, I was catching so many fish on that sucker and I felt it thumping and, and everything that didn't, didn't matter to me what it was doing underneath there. It was doing it right. Didn't have a that chance to hunt. Be couldn't, nice. couldn't go far enough to hunt. That's right. Before a bass nailed it. That's right. What's a what good time were you? At? Yeah. When were you at Beanville? Uh, actually down there last week. So I was down there on Wednesday and Thursday and I uh, got to fish with Mr. Ron Rouse. He's probably yeah. watching this right now from down at Okeechobee. Right. Uh, good luck down there, buddy. Uh, but anyways, we had a lot of laughs about Ken Duke while we were down there. <laughs> <laughs> Ron, Ron Rouse is one of my favorite people on the planet uh, until you just told me that he's talking trash about me now. <laughs> now, Ron, you're dead to me. 
That's right. <laughs> That's awesome. So you guys caught the hell out of them, huh? Oh yeah, yeah. But it was it was you know down there you can catch them on a, a lot of different lures, you know, swim jigs and and swimming worms and sinkos and chatter baits and and whatever you want. So uh, it's just it's just a really good time. You can fix that by going in July. <laughs> well, well, I, I'll tell you, in July, I He's have been, been in July with Mr. Ken Duke there. I believe we had a little uh, little tournament going on. I, I, I think Ken may have came in last, but uh, <laughs> 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 Bag. You're, you're down there with Ron Riles now, Matthew. That's, <laughs> that's not good territory anymore. Oh, so, man. You may suddenly experience technical difficulties. We may lose your <laughs> feed. <laughs> <laughs> BTC, we got We got to get some more baits in here. Uh, who's up next, Ken? Is it George? Let's get back to George. Let's go back to George here because uh, uh, he sent the shortest list, but I, we still got a long way to go if we're going to get through most of these. Yeah, I. Uh, so I'm going to another trend. I'm going to the BFS trend. Um, and, I love it. You know, my bait's going to be arguably not new for 24, but you haven't been able to buy the damn thing for the last two or three years, so I'm calling it new for 24 because they're in stock. And it's a Mega Bass Karashi. Yeah, there you go. There's a nice picture. But, you know, I just, and I'll tell you how rare they are and how hard they are to come by. This one I'm holding in my hands. It's the only one ever made. No, <laughs> it, I'm telling you, I, this particular color, I mean, we probably have 12, 13, 14 colors in stock. This color right here, which is called. Uh, HT Ito Wagasaki KS. Was well, of course, I would have guessed order. that. <laughs> was Why is there always a Wagasaki in there? <laughs> yeah, it was on back order for over a year. Oh my word, George! That looks like a walking bait. Is that what it is? Well, it sinks, so it's a. Okay. Uh, oh, there we go. But it, it can sinks, walk underwater. It walks. It walks really good. If you work it a little quicker, it'll kind of come up to the surface. You can let it die back down again. It's kind of erratic. It's tail weighted, um, and for a little bait, it's it's deadly. This George, is a I bet, mis I, misleading bait. I bet you remember the old Lucky Craft Wander. Absolutely, this which, is uh, it's very much like the Wander. Yeah, I love the Wander. Um, Only this is two inches long. Gotcha, gotcha. And they made some pretty small wonders that were no more than maybe two and a half or three. Yeah, that's what this is, like two and a half. And I think it's got, if I had to look at these hooks and guess, Ken, I would say these are <laughs> literally like size 10 treble hooks. Oh, my gosh. Mm, so like a a fine trout. Route. You could catch yeah, a, a trout, trout bait on this thing. But it also catches big bass. Le legit. This thing is a legit bait. Um, we sell an <laughs> absolute ton of them. And of course, it's Mega Bass, so it's got that Mega hefty, Bass, Mega Bass price tag on like all six levels, you know. What is it? What does that thing go for? Seventeen ninety nine. Less than I thought. Yeah, right. I mean, it's still pricey for a two and a, two inch bait, but it's you know it's mid column of the water. You're not going to necessarily ever lose it. Um, so it's you know it's it's a safe buy. I could lose it. Jacob, George, everything is on your radar. You. I'm sorry. Go ahead. We got Brian's. Got I got something. a question for George. Oh, sorry, oh, Jacob. Brian, you can go first. No, no. Oh, Maybe that was. You. I was just going to say there was a comment on the board that said Rapala made a bait like that, but it wasn't JDM, so it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't for me. It was from the board. They did. They did, but it was much bigger, and it did work. The board uh, is snarky. Okay. The board. Oh. I've been watching the board. There's some people that are. They've got some opinions tonight. It was called. A, <laughs> it was called a subwalk. Yeah, ah, I like the, it. The rapple bit. Yeah. What's interesting to me about the the board is uh, there's an entirely different program going on in chat than what we are having here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't have it. All true. Mine. And that fascinates me. I'm sorry, Jacob. Is this a bait that's been on your radar, or or it, it is. was not due to. It, Due to lack of lack of availability, it hasn't been one that's made its way into our inventory. Knowing that gotcha. we've hopefully, to hopefully one to two colors at a time knocks it off, and uh, we can get them. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew, what about you? Uh, so, 
transparency, this is the first time I have seen this lure. And just because um, how the industry works, there are some companies that don't have a distribution program. Uh, so, and, and Mega Bass happens to be one of them. I would love to be able to distribute their products, but uh, they, they like selling to retailers and they're able to control their, their quality and, uh, you know, demand and things like that a little, little easier when they go directly to the retailer. Uh, but seeing George hold that little thing up, I can imagine some big river smallmouth coming up and just smoking that thing. Oh, the big fish eat it. It's, you know, you want to have a medium light rod with like light, light eight pound line. And, uh, yeah, they eat it. They eat it really good. That was my question for you, George. Are you throwing that on a BFS rod or are you throwing it on a spinning rod? I throw it on a spinning rod. Um, okay. I don't actually have what you would call a BFS setup in my personal inventory, but uh, we throw it on a spinning rod, and it, you can cast the thing a country mile. I mean, it it zings. Um, it would cast really well on any BFS setup, and you just kind of it's 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 just a very erratic, usually a quick, short little twitch. It's like fishing a jerk bait, but like, like super hyper fast is sure. the best way for me to describe how this bait works. Um, more for me, it's more, I would rate this thing very strong in the warmer months, like, you know, after the spawn, the summer months, the fall, when they're eating all them little bitty sheds. Mm -hmm. um, we get a lot of really low, clear water on our river, typically in the summer and the fall. <laughs> this bad boy will straight catch a big smallmouth. Yep. That's very cool. That's outstanding. Well, um, I don't know if she's still on the board, but again, a shout out for Jessica Herring. And um, come on, guys. And uh, Matt, do you have another pick? Um, you know what? I've got one that I don't know if anybody else will have on their list. Jessica um, Herring? <laughs> <laughs> um, Jewel Live Spin. <laughs> Oh. No, I do not. So what's no, you were the only uh, one who had this bait I on I figured, the list. I figured I would have. It is a sleeper. Uh, we, it's a sleeper. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm telling you. I look at the numbers, and it is a sleeper. It only comes in three colors. I think it's uh, pearl, white, silver, and there's a table rock shad, I think is what it's called. It's kind of like a sexy shad-looking color, but uh, it, it's a one-ounce basically a little spinner bait wow. it's made for four face and sonar um uh -huh. if, if if you watch some of the lives and stuff there's a lot of guys throwing big spinner baits um uh, for forward face and sonar i mean there's uh i i know especially with some of the tournaments that you know i, I fish and things there's there's guys that are using the, the big three quarter ounce or ounce spinner baits and getting them down there to where they need to go <laughs> quick and, and just not talking about it but i mean we've we've sold a pile of these things so, like I said, I, I figured nobody else would have it on the list. That's kind of why I put it on there. But, nice. uh, like, I said, like I said, it's a sleeper. <coughs> that's a good, that's that's a good one. That's the, is it the Jewel Scope Spin? or oh, so, 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 so they originally called it the Scope Spin. And okay. they, and they when, when I was making sure I had everything right earlier, because I made a bunch of notes to make sure I had everything right, it, it, they now call it the Jewel Live Spin. Jewel live spin. Yep. Very nice. Garmin. Jewel makes a lot of fabulous stuff. Yep. Yeah. Great, great people too. Yes. Let's keep Garmin it rolling, did man. go after a handful of brands that had uh, scope in their name. Ah. Yeah, I was curious about that. Okay. Ah. <laughs> Jacob has just explained the world of the fishing industry to us, hasn't he? <laughs> I won't throw anyone else under the bus, but there were a couple of different baits that we had where we did need to change the name. How about that? Yeah, this is why this a, why you get the inside guys, man. This exactly. Is, this is why we yeah. have Jacob and George why. and Matthew. They they know how it works. Absolutely. They get it. Jacob, what, what what you got? I'll go a little bit smaller one now. Uh, I believe this was a classic launch last year, so not quite iCast, but it's been very strong since uh, they launched <laughs> at the classic. Mm -hmm. It'd be the Dirty Jigs Tactical Bassin Underspin. There you go. It is 
built off the guppy head, which I, I think we all three of us would unanimously say is a barn burner. I mean, we sell a ton of them, a mm-hmm. ton of them. Um, Thank God that that wasn't invented by a Japanese company or they would have got roasted. <sighs> Even better yet, a Canadian one. There you go. That's a don't worry about Canadians. <laughs> Knock them off. I love the dropper. So they've got a extra long dropper to it so that even if you've got plastic on there, you got a swimmer, it's actually separated your blade from further down. Um, I think they did a nice job. I like the, the bait keeper on it. Good sizes, good colors. It sold really well. I wouldn't say it's anything crazy, right? In, yeah. in design, it's it's very basic. It's very utilitarian but just like everything dirty jigs it does very well mm-hmm. and i think this wow. was a an awesome addition to their lineup um yeah their that's why i made my list built to last george is the underspin a a big thing in, in your market it is um and what's interesting about this underspin is i almost put it on my list so uh, we're huge dirty jig fans here um hard to not be good guys yeah, I mean, you know, we go back to the very day, like day one when they when they took over Nichols, and you know they're fantastic people. They do a fantastic job, um, and that bait, that little jig head right there, is legit. It's quality. The it's got a small hook, but it's mighty, and you it's know, underspins in general. I mean, uh, it's almost been like a rebirth. Um, you can attribute it to forward facing sonar if you will, but underspins in general, you know, and we're just coming off the, the, you know, the, the, the late fall, which is peak underspin season, uh, early spring is also really good for it. Um, you know, so there's, we have a whole corner back in the, in the back of the store where all the jig head area is like kind of the jig head center. There's a whole corner that is underspins. It's wow multiple brands, multiple hooks. I mean, it's a lot. And that, that bad boy just came right in and, and took over like the street corner. I mean, he's, that's a big seller for us. Beautiful bait. Fantastic. All right. Matthew, I know you do a lot of stuff with uh, Brooks Woodard at, at Nichols and, and also if you don't mind, I'm going to ask you to pick your next one because we got so much ground yet to cover. Oh gosh. Um, like I said, I didn't, I, I didn't really uh, number any of them. No, no, no. I, just just I, whatever you're excited about is cool. Well, I, I'm excited about it just because I think it's unique. But uh, you guys seen the Missile Baits Monster Jig that they came out with with a 10 on? Yeah. Holy smoke. It would have made my list, but we haven't, <laughs> Holy they haven't shipped yet. They have not shipped yet. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just looking at them, and I'm like, wow. I mean, what, uh, what did they, what did Byron convince you guys to do? Because he's a big swim bait guy, and so I, I'm, I, I blamed it all on Byron. But no, it's, it's cool and stuff. We, we pre-booked several, you know, pre-sold, uh, several of them and things like that. And I just think it's really cool that you see a jig that's as big as my hand, and, and stuff. So it's, it's just something that's unique and different, and I haven't seen much of it. So that is interesting because you know every other bait we can think of has been supersized. But this may be the first time I can think of a jig being supersized. Hold up. Let's see. Well, wait for the message board. Yeah, wait for the message board to tell me I'm wrong <laughs> when I'm not. When I'm not wrong. The the, the oh, cool man. thing is, is the, the cool thing is too is I don't think it's uh, gonna be limited to bass. I think some some musky guys and, and things like that are gonna use Oh yeah. Yeah it's striper not guys. Much. Yeah, yeah. So it's, we got, we it's, it's video. I don't know. Definitely the musky crowd. The musky crowd is going to attack that thing. Yeah. Yep. Um, more so than the bass crowd will. But you know, like Byron says, think swim bait, not jig. Yeah. W- what's the lightest weight on that monster jig? I think it's a one, one ounce. One I think ounce. they. Yeah, they do a Just one, one, and one ounce one across the, one and one and a half. Wow, that's a yeah. that's a beast. Yeah, that's think. Beast. Uh, Think like 5.8 to 7.8 boot tail on there as a trailer. 5.8 being the smallest trailer you're going to put on there. 7.8 being a little more in the wheelhouse. So you dress that bad boy up and you're, uh, you're making a statement. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're, you're looking for a kicker at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Or you're catching nothing. Well, my musky <laughs> crowd, my musky crowd, <laughs> a lot of that. My musky crowd, that thing to work. 
Yeah. Jacob, what else you got for us, Jacob? I'll go the opposite end of the spectrum with, from uh, from Matt with the monster jig. The uh, the Beast Coast L Metal Open Water Sniper Jig. Yes. Tell us about that bait. Open water sniper jig. So this so is weed guard. Rig- yep, no weed guard. It's a football jig with no weed guard, a, a two watt BKK hook. Um, got a great little bait keeper on it. The original one is made of tungsten. Um, I'm sure George sells plenty would be my guess. Um, obviously a, an awesome smallmouth dragon bait. I know a lot of guys are scoping with it as well, letting it sit and like popping it and shaking it and letting the skirt flare up as they're uh, put in front of fish's face. Um, Derek came out with the lead version or a, an L metal um, comes in, I think at three ninety nine, which is pretty affordable. I think, yeah, especially for guys around here or if, say you're in some pretty nasty smallmouth areas where it's super rocky and you're tired of snapping off a six, seven, eight dollar tungsten mm-hmm. football jig. This is going to be an awesome, awesome, awesome thing to swap in there. When you know you're around rocks, you're okay breaking them off. Um, but also wanted to give some love to smaller manufacturers that are coming out with cool product. I think that's associated with Travis Manson, isn't it? Correct. Does he not have his name on it? No. No. Correct. I think he has it on the tungsten version. Oh, okay. After the after what is it? Travis calls it after the sh- what is it? The shift? The uh, uh, what does he call it? The cosmic realignment or the, something? Uh, His name will be on. No. Uh, I can't think it, of George. I can't think of the terminology. George, George, when you go with your next selection here, I guarantee you, no one else has it on the list. Reset. You're, the big reset. <laughs> yes, thank you, Travis's big reset. Um, because George, Thanks, none of your, none of the rest of your picks were also selected by Jacob or Matthew. What you got I for us? I'm, I think I'm basically down to one pick. You uh, are. Well, no, you got two. Do no, I? You're right. You're no, you got, you're down to one pick. You're exactly right. I have one. And, and again, it's category oriented. So you I want call, to trade that pick. I, I, later I, you know, I possibly could, you know, I possibly could, but, um, okay. no, I'm going to keep my first round draft pick here. I'm in a rebuilding year because I'm an Eagles fan. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is going to be, and I call it Demiki rigging. So Demiki rigging to me is the original name. You know, you can call it moping, whatever, mopping, whatever. Straight lining. And I'm going Straight real lining. small too. Let me get my camera lined up here. I'm going with the little Z-Man 3.5. Scented jerk shad, the little gussy special. Yes. Um, obviously, I have it on a little Z-Man head, the little 1-0 hook, finesse eye, you know, uh, jig head, <laughs> which is such a great. This thing shines in, you know, shallow water forward-facing situations. You know, I fished a lake uh, in uh, New Jersey, actually. What? What? Yeah. What? Where? Well, I mean, I mean, they in New Jersey they called it a lake. Were you, was it snakehead fishing? I or called it, I called it a pond. <laughs> but this lake was interesting in that there was fish were all like three, four feet. And fish. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get the hell out of here! I <laughs> live here, bro. Don't yeah. try that shit. I yeah, sure, I made sure your truck wasn't at the boat ramp before I put in. <laughs> but. You know, this little bait on this little head, I was able to stay above those fish. And, you know, it just, it works great in that scenario. And it also works great in a traditional open water, you know, Demiki rigging technique. You got the little, just a little profile. It comes in a bunch Man, of colors. Of course, it's Z-Man. You know, um, how can you go wrong? Very durable floats. So, Yeah. I went Z-Man twice on you. I, I know you didn't want to hear nothing from the big houses, the evil empire, Z-Man. You know, <laughs> since, since, when are, since when is Z-Man the little guy? No, I said you didn't want to hear from the big houses. No, but I'm saying I don't think, I don't think of Z-Man as the little underdog. Neither do I. I think, I think they're, the, I think they're a, the, a big dog. I said I'm sorry they're I went a, with the big houses. Oh, oh I'm, I, see, I see what you're saying. Well, I yeah, still I, had you with one more bait, actually, George. Uh, a no. spro bait left. 
Oh, uh, well, we kind of talked about that at the beginning, but yeah, the, a little uh, bit. the Chad Shed. Yeah, we had that up. We did have that up. You're right. Yeah, we had that. We talked about that at the beginning. We talked I about have, it as a trend. Yeah. I have like a personal connection with this bait. Uh, I've caught, this is, I'm new to glide bait fishing. I'm only like a couple years into it. This has been my, my baby. I've been, I've been wreaking havoc with this thing. I've been catching small mouth, large mouth, little, huge. Uh, I have unstoppable confidence in this bait right here. In that particular color. Bait. That bait right there. Bone. Yeah. I don't even know if I have another color. Um, I throw it on 25-pound test fluorocarbon. 25? Yeah. George, you'll double your catches with 15. I'll, I'll, I mean, it's I don't, not I'll that big of a bait, dude. I'm gonna bust that thing off with 15. No, you won't. <laughs> He's looking for a state record, Brian. Let you him throw 25. Classic, buddy. You won't, you won't break that off. Oh, I'll think about it. I'm telling well, you, I, I love it. I love it. It was a great trendsetter. Um, I think it got a lot of people really fired up on glide bait fishing, and I saw, I saw a lot of people interested in the bait. Because it was, you know, from that KGB background, it was affordable. It was it was obtainable. It got them into the bigger glide baits. It got them into, you know, buying a, a rod, a reel, line. Um, you know, help with with the whole process. And uh, I just think the bait that that collaboration. I I really it was to me in the swim bait sector it really went well jacob you've got a spro bait we haven't talked about on your list yeah i've got the sashimi swimmer Sash, sashimi swimmer something like sashimi. that sashimi sashimi, sashimi swimmer yeah. I, I know that because my wife is japanese that's the only reason i know anything about japan there you go give you give you credit there um it doesn't look like super a, pretty cool bait that obviously it's I'm waiting for Brian's comment. Obviously, it's yeah, the right, magic sure. swimmer. I know it's coming. I know it's coming. Nope. Um, <laughs> to, to me. Nope. Are there other <laughs> multi-jointed swim baits? Yes, but that one looks different to me. The, yeah, the, so the angled cuts. Correct. Yep. It's cool. I like it. It uh, <laughs> had a lot of demand coming out of the um, coming out of the Carolinas, coming out of any herring lake. Um, we've sold a pile of them a lot more than I anticipated we would sell. Um, it's a unique bait for its category that's being produced right now. I think that's how, fair. How um, big is the large version? The, the biggest the 125. So this 25? is a 105. So you're probably looking at, I don't know, maybe that big. Well, I suppose you can't exactly. See. Exactly. Yeah. Cause it was, you know, American company being inches, but I don't know. <laughs> Oh, whatever. I'm that's, kidding. I'm that's kidding. not even true. Uh, <laughs> You're right. We should learn the decimal system. Or I remember when I was a kid, they were telling us, yeah, the English system is going to be gone soon. The decimal system is taking over. Well, a million years later, not so much. Yeah. <laughs> um, Matthew. Oh, I know. Oh, I'm sorry. George, what you got? I was going to say. Oh, I'm sorry. George. No, I'm Jacob. I, I love the pick. Jacob. Yeah. We Jacob, cut you off, pick. man. Don't let Bring BTC get you down. He knows yeah. well enough that everything that we're likely to talk about for the next has 10 been years knocked is off. going to be a knockoff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Eventually, if we wait long game. enough, there will be something truly new and different. I'm just um, trying to get my outrage days. on. Yeah. Matthew, what, what's up next? Um, I'm surprised nobody said anything about it yet. Uh, I don't know how, many, how much more time we have and how many more picks we get, but I got, I got two I really want to get off. So one, one is the Rapala Maverick. No, nobody said anything about that thing yet. It's just a good bait. Um, it's it's a really, really good jerk bait. It comes with Back premium component. <laughs> how, how, how many more jerk baits can you make? Damn it. Yeah, there's, there's, it's a jerk bait, BTC. But, but, it's, it's a jerk bait from the but, guys but who really kind of introduced the jerk bait <laughs> 65 years ago. Yeah. If you want, but, If you want to really get down to it. Yeah, I mean, if well, you, if you look at it, it's a uh, it's it's got really good components. It's got their BMC Redline hooks, where it's have that Teflon nano coat. 
uh, already on it that ever that a lot of people are liking, and a lot of people switch out their hooks to like those Gamakatsu G finesse and and, and things mm-hmm. like that. So it's just, it's just a really well made jerk bait. I think it comes in like fourteen or fifteen ninety nine. So it's uh it's about ten dollars cheaper than what a mega bass is. So a guy that's wanting a, a more premium jerk bait, but you know he doesn't doesn't want to buy uh, a, a super cheap uh dump bin one for three ninety nine or four ninety nine. You can go on up and get you a, a a really really nice quality jerk bait for you know fourteen fifteen bucks. Yeah, you know BTC wants to pick on them and call them a knockoff when this was the company that really introduced that style bait. Now you could argue that the original floating rapala was a twitch bait, not a jerk bait, but I think you're that that's splitting hairs, which I would know very little about actually. Jacob, you also had this bait on your list, the rapala maverick. What do you like about the maverick? I did just like Matt's. I got to fish it this fall. Um, it darts really well. It it. it you can snap on it pretty good and it'll, it covers a lot of ground side to side. Um, Red line has been, has done well for us both sales wise and it's performed well in my own fishing. So that it has that going for it. Um, it doesn't get down super deep. I'd love them to come out with a deeper version. Yep. Agreed. Um, but yeah, it's been a, been a strong one. I love that they came out with some non-traditional Rappel colors. Um, and Rapplet tends to get stuck in those colors that they've done for so many years. Uh, I like that they came out with some additional colors that we haven't seen from them before. So I think they did a good job. Absolutely. Uh, George, a little earlier you mentioned BFS, which uh, for anybody who's not familiar with that acronym, it's Bait Finesse System. And I love BFS. It's really uh, casting gear for guys who don't like spinning gear who want to throw lighter lines, lighter baits. George, you mentioned you don't, you don't carry any BFS stuff with you personally, but are you seeing any growth in that market in, in your shop or online? Really, really big. Yeah. BFS has taken, taken off really well here. Um, Rods, reels, baits. Um, You know, we've, we've, we've grown that quite a bit. As a matter of fact, uh, we have an event, in March and we actually have a seminar that is devoted to uh, BFS uh, each day of our event. We have a seminar speaker um, who actually works for Megabass, who's going to do a full on, you know, BFS from beginners to advanced. And I expect it to be pretty well attended um, just because there's so much interest in that. And it's also fun, you know, you can set up a bait casting outfit to do what you're doing with a finesse spinning rod. Um, and there's some beautiful options out there. So, yeah, it's been really big for us. Yeah, and there's, more still, than... new, there's still new categories. There's still new uh, reels coming out in that category. I know Daiwa's getting ready to launch two BFS reels that are due in, like, in time for the Classic. So right, Shimano's, yeah, Shimano's had a Corrado for BFS for a while now. Uh, Abu's getting ready to introduce one if they haven't already. Uh, as you say, Daiwa, um, and, and then you've got Cast King's got one. Yep. And then a number of companies are introducing rods for that category now. I, I get a kick out of it. Um, yeah. All right, Jacob. Ken, we got, Chris, yes. Real, real quick. Yeah. Dexter's Lure Lab says BFS style reels used to be called spin casters. <laughs> uh, not not so much, but okay. <laughs> no, they're, they're, that's not even the same. <laughs> that's taking some liberty stuff. there. Yeah, that, that's that's a lot of that's that's a little bit of a stretch there, Dexter's. I'd say, <laughs> but but I, right, I still kind of like it. That's kind of kind of funny and snarky. Yeah, I like it. All right, Jacob, what what of, what you got, man? We still got to we're Dexter. we're we're getting ready to close out the show here, but I want to get as many of these Dexter. things as you want. Jacob, what's up next for you? So Matthew had the Maverick just like I did, but my last one on my list is the Hog Farmer ah. Tactical Bassin Micro Flex Rig. There's a yeah, a, an umbrella rig there, an Alabama style rig there. The Tactical Bassin yep. guys, Matt Allen, Tim Little, love those guys. They're they do some of the very best educational uh, video work in, in in the industry. What's special and different about that umbrella rig? So they're the hog farmer. Love those guys. First off, they're I love what they do. 
They do they do their own thing. They're original. They keep it that way. They're always coming mm-hmm. out with something. And hold on, let me check no the other. message board. Yeah, yeah someone uh, Illuminati Nathan's <laughs> going to throw me under the bus again. But <laughs> ah. <laughs> uh, their flex rig is one of their best sellers. It's a five wire five wire rig. I think the flex rig has I want to say four blades on it. Uh, so they downsized it on this one, and they've got two blades on it. Uh, I'm partial. I love throwing an A-Rig. I throw an A-Rig with dummies on it a lot. So this one comes with uh, CPS springs on it already. Minnesota, right. we can't throw. I can't even throw three on it. Like it's got set up right out of the package. So I would have to take these two off and put dummy heads on it or wow. put more CPS springs on it. But, I mean, you can see it compared to my hand. I mean, it's it's small. Not big, yeah. But it's got the flex. I think it's even a lighter wire than the traditional flex wire. So it's soft. I mean, the wire is very, very, uh, I don't know if supple is the right word, but it's soft and, and pliable. Yeah, supple. Yeah. yeah. Something like uh, that. I'll tell you, why isn't everybody who has one of those hitchhiker <laughs> type things, why doesn't everybody have that, that owner CPS system? I, I just think that is hands down the best screw in system out there. And 100%. I, get, I get nothing from the, I'm sorry, owner guys to say that, but I do love that. that yeah, CPS on it, we sell they've got. tons of them, but especially on, yeah. I mean, my own A-Rigs, I've got, I keep them in baggies or I've just got extras because I you got to swap them out or one one backs off while you're fishing it or something and you got to replace it. But yeah. um, this one came out just a couple of weeks ago. It's done, done really well. I'd expect it to continue to do well, just pretty much everything else Tactical Bassin does. Do you throw that thing... Is that primarily like the typical A rig open water, or do you throw it more more like a spinner bait? I haven't had a chance to fish it. I would okay. fish it like a spinner bait, but, but like a smaller a smaller A rig. You said you sm- throw an A rig a lot. Oh, I'm throwing it open water. My okay. favorite's probably a Minnesota rig. There, where it's all blades. I think it's five. I think it's a five wire blade that's got uh, eight blades or eight, five wires with eight blades on it. No so hooks. each wire is going to have, well, one hook. It's got one okay. hook right down the middle, but then there's a blade okay. in the middle of each wire and at the end. Okay. I, I assume of an ice auger or something, but okay. Uh, Matthew, there is still one item on your list, on Jacob's list, that, that nobody's mentioned yet. Uh, <laughs> Hold on, Ken. It, 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 it kind of cut out on me there. Yeah, yeah. Nathan, can you go full screen on Ken while this is happening? <laughs> Please. <laughs> screen on me because uh, it just just looks bad. But here I am. Hello, everyone. No, I love Welcome you, to Bass After Dark. <laughs> Ryan the Carpenter is trying to humiliate me, which he's very good at. No, uh, very, very good was, at. This was for me personally. The hell with everybody else. Man. I don't even know it's what he's me. talking about now. Don't worry, don't worry about it. Did, did we say everything we wanted to say about the Nessie? Um, <laughs> best freshwater soft lure. I, maybe we covered it. So Matthew, most original bait ever. He's, he's <laughs> taken he's taken me off my game now. So uh, Matthew, so let's let's pick something else because we did talk about the Nessie earlier, and uh, I just wanted to make sure we did not dismiss it. But but Matthew, you still got a few baits here. I don't know we're gonna have time for them, but uh, uh, give us give us one more. Um, one that I don't think anybody else has on their list, and uh, so at, at Pittman Creek, we we hang our hat on we carry more Zoom than Zoom. And, and and we okay. really do that. I, I got to go visit their facility last year, so we we literally have more Zoom in our warehouse than than uh, they 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 make it to order. So, uh, but it's really cool. So, but anyway, something that's that's unique that um, that we even put on the front of our catalog was the Zoom Uni Toad. And so it, it's it's kind of underrated too, just like that Jewel uh, Live Spin. But I always tell people it's kind of like a horny toad and a big easy head of baby. <laughs> and, yeah, and that so, bait's gonna plane really well i'm guessing yeah so um you got you got guys like brandon cobb that are throwing it on uh buzz baits uh we sell a ton down to the southern states where you you're gonna throw it in kissimmee grass you're gonna throw it on like a 
you know, a, 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 a weighted belly hook or, or something like that and, and roll through the grass with it. And there's even some guys that flip with it. I, I, I wouldn't flip it, but there's a lot of guys that'll flip it. So it's, it's just a really unique bait, something that they came out with. But like I said, I usually tell people it's a horny toad and a big easy head of bait me. I like it. I like it. I mean, Zoom has uh, been the greatest innovator in the soft plastics world, I think, uh, certainly over the last 40 years. Uh, really impressive stuff through the years, especially when Ed Chambers was leading that company. Uh, big fan of Zoom. George, I know Zoom's got to be a big seller in, in your market. Huge. Yeah. Um, you know, when we first started in business, we were direct with Zoom, and their catalog was in a little brown box about the size of a shoe box and it was an endless strip of plastic <laughs> and every individual bait was shrink wrapped or shrink heated to the plastic strip wow. so and i still have it i still have this this relic of time and it, it's it's like eight feet long of <laughs> an, an endless ribbon of zoom baits and it was uh 30 30 something years ago. It was amazing. Yeah. Now they have, I was looking through uh Pittman Creek's listing of custom runs. <laughs> oh yeah. They have. Yeah. The other day. And I literally like gave up like halfway. <laughs> through. I, like, you know what? I think I picked out like 25 new SKUs to add to my listing for my next order. And I said, you know what? I don't even want to look at the rest of them. This is, it's, it's, it's late. <laughs> I need I need Matthew to send me some tomato trick worms, which for a long time trick worms are not Ooh. available in tomato, but I think they're back in uh, and available in tomato again. Uh, Jacob, any that? final thoughts? That you guys have been terrific. You guys have been even better than we could have anticipated. This is fun. I agree. Good. This has been awesome. I, yeah, yeah I, I want to thank all you guys for for joining us tonight. It's been a yeah. blast, and and. Again, for everybody listening, these gentlemen, Jacob, George, Matthew, they, yeah, they're in the business. They're, they're trying to sell baits, but they, they're all they knock represent. Knockoffs. <laughs> they're knockoffs from what you <laughs> They represent. Oh, there's, a, there's a version of them in Japan, and these guys are fucking knockoffs. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. They represent all the brands, and these are the individual products that they're excited about coming into 2024. So, you're looking for uh, some direction and where to spend your fishing budget. Go back, watch the show again, make some good notes, pick up these products because they're they're coming to you from from the unbiased, unvarnished, unbought and paid for experts. BTC, well, BTC's got a new thing now, guys. Where he, uh, well, you'll you'll see, but he he snaps his fingers and then people disappear from the screen. But thank you so much, guys, for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. It's an Thanks ego for having, thing for BTC. Thanks for having us on. <laughs> oh, y'all are it's a lot totally of good having us, Ben. Appreciate it, Brian. Greatly appreciate uh, it. Good one, good one. You got that in there at the last second. You were about to be the first to get. All right. <laughs> I, I knew. Seriously, it was by the way, by the way, I got to mention this though. All these, all, our three guests, Jacob, George, Matthew, they are originals. They are not knockoffs. That's right. We're going to keep it Hold that on. way, too. Let me check that one's not going to fall. Hold up. <laughs> guys, no, seriously, man, this has been a blast. I, I had an awesome time. You guys have been great. And um, George, I know, oh, George, we didn't tell our story. Which one? We have so many. Well, I can only think of. So, so a couple years ago, I, I took a ride up to George's store and was testing out some rods and, and uh, actually <laughs> – this one kind of related to something. Oh shit, my iPad is low. <laughs> um, uh, but anyhow, yeah. So I think it was a. Uh, I won't say the name of the rod, but I was testing the rod out in the store, and uh, is that I can't believe I did it. The only time I've ever done this in my life, and it happens to be right in front of the store owner. <laughs> right in front of him, I snapped the rod right in half. He's like, yeah, ah, no yeah. worries. I'm like, oh, dude. And you can hear it like <laughs> echoing off the walls, you know? To yeah, this day. everybody stopped. And it's just like, oh, dude. <laughs> hey, we got out of it clean, though, didn't we? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I just walked out. <laughs> I slept. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but sorry about that, George. Uh, that's all right. That's all right, you, man. Yeah. No, nah, thank you. Thank you for coming tonight, George. I appreciate it, dude. Nathan? I appreciate the invite. I can't wait. I can't wait till the next time. That's right. You'll be back. We'll be inviting you. Oh, I'm glad I made the cut. Uh, yes, you did. Matthew you did. Jacob, don't worry. When when he does that, it doesn't mean you go into some black hole in space somewhere. You're still you still have object permanency in the universe. Yeah, <laughs> I mean I broke your rod. <laughs> but uh, no, guys, this has been great. Jacob, it's your time, bud. Final words. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. If you want to do a terminal tackle was... one, I'd love to be again. Love to be. It was again. it was the uh, underspin. That's what. Put you second on the list. I'm glad that's what uh, got me on the list. <laughs> that's what got you out of here right now. Boom. <laughs> and then there was one. Matthew Mattingly with his 74 select. No, I'm joking. Matthew, I think, had like 14 entries, which was great. Yeah, and, if you'd let you me have a terminal tackle, I'd probably had 15 oh. or 16 more. So. What, no, what, you know, a... <laughs> you, you submitted that list before before George or Jacob did, and I got to looking at it. I'm thinking, oh, man, we can't handle all that terminal tackle and, and, and try to fit it all in one show. So we <laughs> thought, okay, we'll, we'll do that later. So we'll, we'll be looking to have you guys back and talking about the terminal tackle stuff another time. Well, I, I greatly appreciate the opportunity. You got a uh, great chance to meet BTC and get to pick you, Ken. So, no, I, I appreciate the, the invite and – Look forward to it again. Appreciate Maddie you very Matt. much. Thanks so much. All right. See, see you, guys. Buddy. That was awesome, Ken. That was a great show. I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed those guys. Great personalities, great knowledge, a uh, lot of wonderful insight into the industry, um, and some fabulous advice on the baits. What, what did you see that you liked among all the stuff that they showed us tonight? Can't read any of it, but I wrote it down. I got the Illuminathan 79. I'm going to buy one of them. Uh, the Gravel Dog, the Jewel Lines Live Spin. Yeah. That was interesting. I don't know. There's there's a few lakes I have that in mind. Uh, the fuck? Oh, I was meant to bring up the Hellraiser tonight. That, I uh, saw that Z-Man. pop up on the message board. Damn yeah, it. but wasn't that – that was last. That's more than a year old now, I think. Yeah, I just kind of wanted it. It came up on the message board. I'm sorry, guys. I dropped the ball on that. That's a well, – you know, I'm being honest here. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been an awesome question to ask. Like, that came out with a lot of fanfare and didn't seem to go anywhere. You know? I'm embarrassed to say that I have one, but I haven't thrown it. I hear it makes quite a racket on top, so I need to I need to give that thing a try. I was I excited one. about the that that uh, Mega Bass uh, uh, Karashi that George showed us because I'm fascinated by BFS. Yeah, there's a little thing that just goes out there in the middle of nowhere and does random stuff underwater. Can't beat that, dude. Do you know how hard it is to throw a spy bait? Uh, I have, I don't have a ton of experience with a spy bait. You throw a spy bait in Florida, you spend all day picking weeds off it. Well, same thing with that, except for, I think from what I'm yeah. gathering, you have even less of an idea what's going on. Ah, not, not knocking it. Just saying it's, it's because difficult. it's erratic. It's or... thing. Yeah. There's okay. Random stuff under there. You don't even know. Like you throw a jerk bait, you know what's going on. Yeah. That thing, who the hell knows what's happening? Hmm. I don't know. So cool far, stuff. it hasn't been Some a cool Hellraiser. Stuff. Looks good on the water. Yeah, I threw one. I, I, I don't know. Didn't work out for me. Dude, we're, top 10. We're not done. Yeah, we still got stuff. We still got stuff. Well, we better hurry up. But uh, I think you need to handle it. Oh, God damn it, Ken. I think, I think you need to handle it because you're right. in charge now. I open the show. You close the show. Yeah, the only problem with that is I drink during the whole show, and now it's the end. What do you think I've been doing? What the hell's gonna? That's not alcohol. Anyhow, we got a top ten. Um, those guests were great. I think uh, I think the people watching tonight really enjoyed it. I hope so. I hope yeah. so. That's the whole. That's the whole reason we do it is so the the folks watching will enjoy it. So if you enjoyed it, then we did an okay job tonight. And if you didn't, we'll do better next time. Yeah. 
Don't give up on us. That's right. And watch your mouth and cut message message board. Yeah, so Sorry. as my as my parting words to uh, the message board and uh, oh, all of y'all okay. listening and watching, stay snarky, my friends. Oh, you bastard! You doing that? <laughs> all right, Nathan, let's go. Top ten worst new bass lures of twenty twenty four. The top ten worst new bass lures for twenty twenty four. Number 10, Rapala Circle Jerk. Number 9, Reaction Innovations Sweaty Beaver. Number 8, Booyah Muff Puff. Number 7, Kamala Harris's Cackle Trap. Number 6, Rapala Shad Fat. Number 5, Zoom Hornier Toad. Number 4, The Jackal Bukaki Splash. Number 3, Biden Bait Company's Border Hopper. Number two, Depths Cover Shat. And the number one worst new bass lure for 2024, the Berkeley Drut. That's it. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed it. That was the top 10. Uh, shout out to our man Nathan behind the scenes on the message board or pushing the buttons, whatever. Uh, Jacob Marson, our intern, Ron Stallings on the uh, intro, James Riley with the greatest freaking logo ever. Um, we'll be back next week. We haven't quite nailed our topic yet. We're kind of back and forth. I'm getting surgery next week on Thursday, getting a new shoulder, and I still want to do the show. So we're trying to figure out what I can do. It's tough because we don't want to have a show. It's going to be a mess, dude. So who knows? Um, I don't know. Check us out next week. It'll be probably worse than this one. Pass after dark. We're out.